Hi, I'm Anna Marie. Welcome. I am here at the Art Center in Orange. I'm an artist and I will be teaching you a project for the Art at Home series. We're going to be working on a wonderful artist named Piet Mondrian. Perhaps you've heard of him. I'm sure you have. You've seen his work if you haven't heard of his name. He's a wonderful artist. He was born in 1872 and lived till 1944 and accomplished a lot in that time. He was a Dutch painter. He's a modernist and he's known for his abstract art. You are probably familiar with it in the main way that most of us are with his grid work. And it has the primary colors in it with black and white. Let me show you the color. Wheel. So he worked mainly in the red, yellow, and blue colors with black and white. These are the primary colors. All the colors come from here. It's pretty cool. So we're going to take, we're going to springboard off of Piet's work and we're going to take it a little farther in a completely different way and honor his work. Okay? Come with me. So you're going to be doing something completely different. It's a bird, right, on a branch, and the sun is up. But I want you to think about that Mondrian technique, which he's so well known for, which is that grid or squaring kind of way of working. So we're going to alternate some colors. These are the cool colors we're going to be using here and here. A little warmth here and here, OK? So we're going to alternate. And we're thinking it's a bird, so it's kind of these feathery strokes. But we don't have the whole thing completely squared out, just some areas of interest. A couple of spots here and there, OK? So let's begin. You're going to begin first by blocking it out. Now, every single thing is brought down to simple shapes. And you can just do this very lightly. You do not have to be pressing hard at this point. It'll disappear as we work, okay? So don't feel pressured in any way. Let's think about that bird's head. A bird's head is basically a circular shape. So we're going to just, kind of blocking that out, just a soft idea of a circle, okay? Just about there. We have that circle over here of the sun. It's a little bigger. We'll just kind of get that there. So the rest of the body, it's kind of like an oval shape, right? So I'm going to just... I know he's got a nice straight back, so I'm going to just kind of get that line from the back down this way. And that oval kind of belly that the bird has, right? And, and then that wing is kind of triangular shaped, very similar to that beak. Now it's more parrot-like here. We're going to round all that out. This doesn't have to look perfect in this beginning. The blocking out is really just a basic technique, kind of mapping where you're going to go, what you're going to do. So we've got that beak, kind of a triangle shape, right? Just very um, elementary, fundamental right there. So now we're going to have that wing, that sort of triangular shape. It goes off the body somewhat. And then that wonderful tail is similar, kind of triangular. It's narrowed down here. So here's that branch. And those feet, you just make it up, really. You know, we don't need all those details. We're just going to get in here, uh, Y that branch out this way, have it go across this way, have the basic thing, and just an idea of where those feet are kind of clutching that branch. It isn't so much what you know about it. It's what you see, and you know, just go with that, the idea of something. So here's these leaves. Some are overlapping others. They give the appearance of being in front or behind. So I'm just going to take that simple idea, point, another one behind, just an idea of the leaf. Some of these are bent. They go off the page. They disappear. We don't see the end, but we know that it exists outside this frame somehow. Then another here. This one's going behind. Just kind of making it up. Can't make any mistakes. Remember, those things called mistakes lead you to great places. Okay, so we got the idea. So now we're going to own it, make it ours, get a little bolder with our pencil marks. So I'm going to, that head of a bird is so interesting, kind of flattens a little at the top, goes around the bend, and back. Over here, get under. I love these curves under their chin. 
And then there's that belly. Not too big, but you know, big enough. Get it, get it in there. So that beak, uh, they, you know, you study birds. That's a cool thing to do. Get a bird image in front of you if you're a little uncertain of how you want this to be. So I'm going to curve it a little more. Make it that more of an exotic bird because this guy's got some exotic patterning happening here. So there it is. And that eye, think about that eye as about sort of ish, right about here ish. <laughs> And their eyes, you think of them as just round, but really they, when you start to look at a bird, they have a similar shape as a human eye, you know, rimmed at least by that. Okay, so now we've got that wing. Get that in there. Kind of a curving here. You can make up a feather or two. We've got them here. And then same with that tail. Now he kind of continues. Get a little feather in here, maybe there and those gripping of those little toes and the clawed feet. You just kind of make it up, make it fanciful. So now I'm back here. I'm gonna get a different color for that branch, okay? I'm using an orange, because it kind of browns out on the paper. It's interesting that it does that, but against this blue paper, it has a tendency to be a browner color. And this is the V of that branch. The V's out, and as all branches, they start wider and then they narrow. Nope, they narrow, get skinnier and whip-like. It's kind of fun to start studying those things. And this is my made-up tree and making it up. It does not have to be anybody else's tree but yours. So now the green, let's get that green there for the shape of those leaves, right? I'm going to do it in a little black. Maybe that will be fun and easier for you to see, too. And I say own it. That just means I, I like my lines. I like where they are. I like what's happening, so I'm claiming it. I like it. I think it's kind of nice. So I'm going to keep it so I can get stronger with my pencil marks, firmer in there. Okay, and then there's this sun. Just kind of round it out. If you feel like you need something to trace on there because you want to get perfect with that sun, go ahead. But getting a little scratchy kind of adds to this a little. So now we're going to do just the beginnings of some of these colors. So note like on here, a little bit of an edging. I want you to see how sometimes that black line disappears. It's bold here, but then it disappears some. We don't have it everywhere when it's a perfectly outlined thing. It has that softness here and there. So, I might edge that eye a little, just to claim that, you know, space around for that bird to be here. And maybe a little highlight. Where's that light coming from? You know, we have all reflection everywhere and color everywhere. Everywhere we are, color is reflected upon us. And if you go, oh, I lost it. No, you didn't. Go back over here. Go back there. So I'm going to just talk a little bit about how, in the beginning, you kind of have that feathery look. And we're just going to go over this way. And we're going in this kind of direction just to keep that bird moving. You want to think of it, you, the way you move your pencil kind of gives it that rounder feel, right? And what happens sometimes when you start to put these colors down, I'm showing a little of that dark blue paper, letting it come through. I'm not coloring it all in, okay? You want some of that to be a, a color as well that comes through here. So I'm just putting that in here. Maybe get a darker blue in here here. Let's see what happens when I put this blue over the other blue. It kind of doesn't show all up. It just kind of gets revealed in these interesting ways. So you get that head and move it on down. I like how I did that little black patch. Kind of like maybe it would be a marking on the bird, right? And that blend it in this way. Maybe get some more of this over it. 
So I'm gonna go into the wing because I wanna to talk to you just a little bit more about this. You see how it's squaring off here, right? Squaring up here. I'm just gonna do about a little of this wing, a little leaf and a little here, and then we'll be done. I won't be done, you'll be done. Um, it'll take some time, but keep that in mind as you work. So I'm going in this direction now. It's all gonna be going, flowing along the feather lines, right? So I'm gonna take these, you could do it sort of checkerboardy if you wanted to, to go, okay, I want some of these colors, maybe here, something over here, maybe a little more blue down here, a couple of feathery looking things this way and that. Let's get some white over here then. Kind of get my areas patched out. So I'm creating sort of a little design in here. Little hints. And what else? What other color should we throw in? How about that black? And letting that blue show through, right? Let that blue get through here. I like this thing that we did before. I'm not sure if you saw the other video. Getting some purple down and then throwing this blue over that purple. Um, really is a nice object and a nice way to work it out. So I'm gonna finish this up quickly. Quicker than you probably will be, right? You're gonna dope a little bit more on it. Some of that blue in here and see what happens. Oh, I like that blue. I might add that here and there. It's sort of, you know, I can get in here and get that moving. So I want to talk to you a minute about squaring it up a little. Now we don't have to do too much, but just getting an idea of where those lines might be that kind of claim out those grid-like patterns that Mondrian has, that he's noted for. Modern art, he's a contemporary 20th century artist. Okay, so you get the idea of how to do it. Now yours is gonna flow in a completely different way than mine, but you'll take it from there. So we've got these pencils. I'm gonna do one of these leaves and then we're gonna go forward into the sun. So I'm just getting that green in there. And at first you think, oh, it's so dark, you can't see it. So we'll take some of that sea green and get that in there. And white is such a wonderful little savior. It gets in there too. Me, I'll put some white down and see what happens when I go over the white. See how it pulls it forward? I can get it darker if I don't, I'm not a fan of it. You know, just kind of blend around. Attach it to this. Get some of this orange and white in here. You know, I'm gonna alternate where I've got the orange in there, down this. Love the blue behind there too. You get the idea. You can always do this. Get, claim it again. Get a little black behind here, this branch. Make it part of the scene. It's kind of disappearing there. And then take that white and maybe put it just on certain edges so you, you have little bits of different murals of color, okay? And just a little bit here, those warmer colors. This is interesting to see how this actually works. Look how this yellow isn't as bright. Look how bright that yellow is, but it sort of dulls out here a little, right? Throw a white in there, let that blue show through. And I, I like this pattern of kind of going around almost in moon shapes, orb-like shapes as we go. And then go back in there and get that black to square it up so we stick with that Mondrian pattern. I hope you have a good time. Enjoy it. Glad to see you. Bye.